Hi everybody. This Sunday, April the 7th, the final cobbled classic of the season is already upon us. The Queen of the Classics, the Hell of the North, Paris-Roubaix. 260k from Compiègne to Roubaix, comprising 29 cobbled sectors, including resounding names such as the Trou d'Arenberg, Mont saint pevel and the Carrefour de l'Arbre, typically good for around 55k on the cobbles. The weather forecast at the time of recording, according to Meteo France, is a cloudy day, with downpours in the morning, so as things stand now, they'll be tackling the cobbles in dry weather, while some of the sectors may still have wet or damp patches. The winners of the final 10 editions are all typical classics riders, including Fabian Cancellara, who won the race on three occasions. Interesting to note from this overview is that half of the last 10 editions have been won by either a Dutch or a Belgian. And that the Dutch have a patent on solo wins here, being the only three to win the race solo. Terpstra in 2014, Van Baarle in 2022 and Mathieu van der Poel last year. The remaining editions saw a sprint of two to six riders. In my book, good fortune needs to be on your side for this race, yet as in the Tour of Flanders, the strongest automatically flow to the surface. Here's the betting odds at the time of recording, with Mathieu van der Poel once again the main favorite, followed by Philipsen and Pedersen. Here's an overview of some of the riders lining up with previous experience in the Hell of the North, comprising three former winners. Jean Degenkolb in 2015, Dylan van Baarle in 2022, and the defending champion Mathieu van der Poel. Then, there's some riders with an above average number of top 10 finishes, compared to their starts taken. Drawing my particular attention are Degenkolb and van der Poel, once again, along with Lampard, Philipsen and Lawrence Rex. Given that I won't be in a position to upload over the next few days, here's the riders to watch from the preliminary start list. Should major changes occur over the next few days, I'll update the video description accordingly. At Sudal Quickstep, this has been Lampard's race in the last few years. On the podium in 2019 and top 10 in 2015, 21 and 22. Those are proper credentials and not calling him for the top 10 here would be a mistake. Then, Tarling at Ineos, 20 years of age, with a massive engine, outside the time limit on last year's Paris-Roubaix, which I take as a positive. He could have gotten into the broom wagon, yet he didn't. Note, he got into 6th in Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen and 17th on the Ronde. I'm calling him. And should Sheffield line up as rumored, you can add him to the list as well. At UAE, Nils Pollitt tends to thrive on the cobbles of northern France, 7th in 2018 and runner-up in 2019. 21 to 23 were a bit less, yet he's in great shape, just having scored P3 in the Ronde. Welles and Morgado are new to Roubaix, yet could also do really well here. Both are in great shape, 12th and 5th respectively, on last weekend's Ronde van Vlaanderen. At Visma Lisa bike then, we have three names so far, with Van Baarle and Laporte having had a disturbed run-up to the race, due to sickness. I'm expecting them to ride all in for Jorgeson, who is strongly underrated for this race, in my opinion. Mohoric is on his fifth participation and came in fifth here in 2022. The big question for him will be up to what point the stitches in his elbow following his Ronde van Vlaanderen crash will be playing up. In my book, Mohoric is amongst those riders who can ride through a wall, so I'm not counting him out. Petiol at EF is lining up here for the first time, so it will be interesting to see how he fares. Alpes in de Koning then is lining up with two of the main favorites, Mathieu van der Poel and Jasper Philipsen, the numbers 1 and 2 of last year's edition. Jasper Philipsen has made Roubaix one of his main goals of the season, yet with the Ronde van Vlaanderen win in the pocket, Mathieu van der Poel must be having the prestigious Ronde Roubaix double on his mind, especially since he can do it in the rainbow jersey. Note that Mathieu started here twice before, ending in third, ninth and first respectively. At Little Trek, Pedersen looked very strong in the Ronde, despite having suffered a big crash in Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen. He came home in fourth on last year's Paris-Roubaix, which has been his only top 10 finish out of six race starts. Despite that statistic, it's hard to bet against him, given that he's clearly on a roll, winning the Etoile de Bessèges and the Tour de la Provence, fourth in San Remo, and out sprinting Mathieu for the win in gent wevelgem Milan started here before in 21 and 23, yet didn't finish on both occasions. Stefan Kung at Groupama, third in 22 and fifth on last year's edition, 
and Max Walscheid at Jai Lula, 8 here on last year's edition, and of course John Degenkolb at DSM, a former winner here back in 2015, are all riders to watch. Degenkolb proved he still has it by riding into P7 on last year's edition. And I'm also mentioning Luca Mozzato at Arkea, runner-up to Mathieu van der Poel in the Ronde van Vlaanderen, and riding into 20th on two of his three earlier participations in Roubaix, as well as a top 10 in Le Samain, making him an outsider for the top 10 in this year's Roubaix in my book. I consider Turgis at Total Energy and Rasmus Stiller at Uno X as outsiders for the top 10 as well, as is Nase, who is having a good campaign, 7th on last weekend's Ronde van Vlaanderen. And then finally, Enter Marché is lining up here with some serious contenders. Girmay and Page, who is also rumored to start, will be lining up for the first time, while Rex was 21st here in 21 and 9th on last year's edition. Mike Teunissen is another rider who tends to do fairly well here. Now, before I move on to my stars for this year's Paris-Roubaix, I want to thank you all for getting this channel to the point where super tanks can be enabled. So should you have made a nice return on an informed bet, or should you have destroyed your buddies in a fantasy cycling league, or should you just feel like it, you now have an additional way of supporting the channel. Mathieu van der Poel is my only 4 star favorite, Pedersen and Philipsen get 3 stars, Kung and Polit get 2 stars, Mohoric, Jorgeson, Morgado, Tarling and Rex each get 1 star. And you may call it lack of imagination, yet I expect Van der Poel to take another solo win with Philipsen following wheels behind and outsprinting Pedersen for P2. Enjoy the race and see you next week for my Amstel Gold Race preview.